Live, Paul Reaper Benashik filling in for Sean Fagan as the imposter on his Facebook logging in through there. And I'm here with the champ, Onion Tobich, with Friday Night Fights coming up this Friday, weighing in tomorrow. You're looking good. You're looking like you're in a good mood. Yeah, man. I finished training yesterday. Yesterday was the last day. Uh, yeah, that's it. Once I finish training, I'm I'm in a great mood. Before that, don't fucking come near me. <laughs> How much weight do you normally cut? Uh, for this fight, it'll be about eight pounds. Eight pounds. And you're right there? Yeah. So I'm good to go. Man, that's beautiful. Uh, who is your opponent and what do you know about him? What Do you are, do you even train for specific opponents or is it just that you, yeah, you, sometimes. you train? Yeah. I mean, not in, uh, uh, the opponent is uh, Travis Clay and... Uh, you know, I'm not. I didn't go online and like study any of his any of his uh, videos. For me, it's just good it, enough to uh, uh, see like 30 seconds to a minute of uh, how he fights, uh, yeah. and that's pretty much it. All I need to do is get down the rhythm, um, maybe a couple of things that the the opponent likes to do, and uh, that's pretty much it, man. I, I don't I don't go out there and study opponents. I think. Um, uh, that can influence uh, me negatively. So, um, you know, my coach does all that stuff in detail. And then we go over, um, uh, you know, his tendencies and things like that. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask if you let your coaches do all the work. I feel like that's always been a better way of me doing it. <clears throat> I might look at just at least what stance is in and things like that. But when it comes to getting trained in different patterns, if your coach is throwing it at you, I think you just get the right yeah, responses. It all, down, that way. it all comes down to uh, experience and, uh, you know, fighting in Thailand. I mean, most of my fights were all against opponents that I had no clue who they were. And then you yeah. show up there and they're walking out with like a title, you know, uh, a Thai guy. And you're like, Jesus Christ, I got to face this fucking guy. I had no clue, you know? So um, you just kind of figure it out as you go along. So with experience like that, it's like, Nothing can stop you. Nothing is really going to get in your way. And as a professional, um, you should be able to take care of any uh, situation that you're put into. So that's my uh, outlook on that. Man, it's exciting uh, for Muay Thai to be growing to the level that it is right now. I know Triumphant just added Muay Thai to UFC Fight Pass, but they were never live for the past two events. So this is officially uh, how Friday Night Fights is actually marketing it from New York City. That is the first live event on UFC Fight Pass. And I think it's just been a long time coming uh, now following Glory Kickboxing. Where do you see this going forward and uh you must be fucking excited for it. I mean, you, yeah. that's where you you started. You started underneath the church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really is exciting. And like you said, I started there at uh, Friday Night Fights. And I'm going to be fighting in front of my hometown crowd, you know. And that's that's uh, uh, something special. Um, so um, I'm going on there to make a statement and put on a, a very good show. Uh, for the people... I mean, you've been featured on Sean's channel multiple times on mine uh, doing some of the fan favorite tutorials and things like that. And then everyone kind of knows you from your Instagram videos, just playing sick beats and getting your pad work done to them. Yeah. Um, why don't you just give a little bit of a background just of your uh, being raised in Europe and making your way over here to, to the States and just your entire journey of going through Thailand, just kind of cliff noting it. Uh, I was born in uh, Bosnia as a Bosnian Serb. We had to, uh, once the war started in Bosnia, we had to move to Serbia. Um, that's where it was uh, generally safe for us. And then from there, um, we lived in Serbia for about three years. And my father was uh, actually in America working um, as a construction worker uh, for his brother. And he was playing the immigration lottery. And uh, he won the immigration lottery. And we ended up coming here to America. And, and uh, that was it. You know, I, I, I came here. I went to school. Uh, got educated um, through college as well, and all throughout that time, I was I was uh, fighting a as an amateur, and then um, turned into professional. And then once I turned into professional, I stayed there for about probably like four years, and then I realized that um, I'm gonna need to uh, just do this uh, as a profession because this is what I love uh, the most. 
And uh, so then I ended up quitting my design job and uh, picked up all my stuff, went to Thailand, lived there for um, some time, and then that was it, man. So now this is uh, pretty much all I do. I would say a lot of people regard you as the number one fighter in your weight class. That's uh, super flyweight, correct? Uh, to be super honest with you, I don't even know the names of the, the weight classes. <laughs> I fight anywhere from 132 to uh, 135. So whatever that is, I guess lightweight. Yeah, sure. I mean, you've gone everywhere from competing in Thailand in, you know, the most prestigious arenas back here on Lion Fight, going back to Friday Night Fights where you started. Where do you think along this entire journey what the most important feature of your character would be throughout this entire journey that got you to this point where people regard you as up there you know with with the kevin rosses of the united states the pioneers of muay thai uh i guess just being a professional you know taking everything uh seriously dedicating your time uh not fucking around uh take yeah, yeah just taking it seriously and uh that's pretty much it man um you know i i'm giving up a lot of things uh for the sport and to be on this level and you know it's, it's showing finally after you know over a decade but that's what it takes it takes like a de decade you know so um uh and you know not giving up because a lot of people do give up you know they're down the road maybe like five six years in nothing's going their way and uh and then they just quit you know but don't forget you got like another four or five years to go before something happens uh you know have something. you ever stopped no never never I've never Not a single time. Was there any close uh, times where you kind of sat down and thought to yourself, like, if is this really all worth it? Uh, many times, but nothing, nothing to the point where it was like serious, where I knew I was gonna stop or something. It was just to the to the point, like where it was like, uh, you know, how am I supposed to make a living out of this? It's like literally impossible in Muay Thai. But you know, like I said, I stayed dedicated. And now I have a name. Now I can do uh, seminars around the country and things like that. So I can make uh, money just off of the sport. So that's that's great. But all due to not giving up. I feel like those times actually piss you off to just figure out how to actually get it done. I feel like any time where I was about to stop and I, or at least I contem contemplated the different details of it, of like, why am I doing this in the first place? That's where I kind of figured out like, fuck, man, I'm already this many years in and I just have to make some dramatic changes. I think those were the times where I did speak to my family and kind of tell them that it's it's either this and you support me or, you know, I'm, I'm going to Thailand. Those those big moves. And I know you've had those moves as well, uh, especially with your family. Yeah. Uh, what was the story like uh, just growing up and doing Muay Thai? And what, how was yeah, your parents, family's my, response? My parents' attitude was, uh, you know, they brought me here to America to make uh, a life out of, uh, you know, here. Uh, like a normal life, you know, going to school, getting educated, and then getting a good job, sec secure job. Um, to them, fighting is like, you know, like the, the, last, the last thing before you're – just like giving up on life. It's like being like a drug addict or something. So it's like, you're literally fighting for your life. That was their out outlook. So they didn't allow me to fight. I had to, uh, um, keep my whole amateur career, um, from them knowing that I was doing it. And that's literally what I would do. I would just, you know, fight and, uh, they wouldn't know I fought. I was just, they just thought I was training. I would come back home with like, maybe like a blue eye or something like that. I would just say, Oh, it happened in training. And that went on for years. And then finally, when I wanted to turn pro, I, I gave him an ultimatum. Uh, ultimatum. I said, you either uh, support me fully or you're never going to see me again. And uh, they realized that, you know, it's not like just a phase, that this is very important to me. And um, obviously, by that time, I was already very good and uh, I was fighting on a high level. So, um, yeah, that was that was the transition, basically. Um. Yeah, such a, yeah, such a beautiful story. I want everyone to be able to follow along, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook. I I know your website is getting a small redesign. You're getting a biography on there, Wikipedia, different things. 
someone wrote you a nice little article there. And um, I just want you to shout out any of your sponsors, anywhere people can check you out, and then just what people can expect on Friday. Just give them the details so they can see you fight. Yeah, I want to shout you out first for writing up that uh, biography on me. That was excellent. So uh, for everybody that's watching, you guys will be able to see that soon. Um, I'll have like a short version on my website and then something longer, hopefully on uh, Wikipedia if I ever figure out how to that's get official. that shit working. Because that's Wikipedia <laughs> official. I was trying. I was trying to figure out how to get that done, but I think I think you got to go through like some kind of professional service. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. But anyway, um, yeah. Thank you for all my fans for following me and uh, always supporting me. Um, means a lot. Really does. And uh, you know, obviously, my sponsors, In Fight Style, Clean Eats, uh, my meal prep company, and On It. Uh, they've been uh, on my on my side for a very long time already, and. Uh, we're doing big, great things. And, of course, make sure you guys tune into uh, UFC Fight Pass. Um, sign up for that seven free day trial. Uh, it's very simple to do. You'll be able to watch me fight this uh, Friday uh, defending my World uh, Kickboxing Association title, um, national Ooh, title. And uh, it's going to be a great, great fight. I'll put on a show 100%. Man, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to resubscribe to UFC Fight Pass. It's been a little bit. The last time was to watch myself. So now I'm going to add it on. Onion Topic, Friday Night Fights, this upcoming Friday. Make sure you guys tune in on UFC Fight Pass. Hope you guys have a beautiful day. Muay Thai guy, minus Sean Fagan. Where yeah, happened to Sean? Where is he at? <laughs> Sean just moved to Thailand. Him uh, and his lady. That was, that was uh, a few months ago, right? Well, uh, they started the plans and they ended up uh, kind of getting delayed because they have a dog they got from Thailand. They rescued a dog in Thailand, Sway, and brought him over here. And I guess the whole process is actually easier coming to the States than going to Thailand with your dog. <laughs> so, so, yeah. they Thanks, they, thanks, thanks to Sean for uh, leaving you hanging over here. <laughs> it's all love man it's a one man show we're gonna keep it running he um yeah i'm probably gonna be joining him i'll be moving back to thailand uh after this summer and then i'll just be flying back in for fights it looks like yeah. we'll be flying back for a uh, lion fight and then just racking up a record as much as i can because i can't be fighting every four months man yeah yeah it's it's definitely difficult i'm i'm hoping to go back by the end of the year too yeah well, what are the big plans uh i mean that's pretty much it for now um but i don't know we'll see how things work out this year and then i'll make a decision you just have your eyes set on friday and then after that is just whatever comes along until you make your move yeah yep that's it take All it right, as it comes along. yeah definitely that's what i'm doing until uh until july time but i'm gonna get out to thailand and just take every fight that i can until you know, you get those 45 days out when you're contracted, you can't fight. But outside of that, I'm just going to be, if, if it's a backyard fight in Thailand, that it is what it is. And then yeah. make the bigger paychecks stateside. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Paul. Do you sleep and shower with that goddamn leather jacket on? Because <laughs> I had it the last yeah. time <laughs> we were not, sparring. Not, not just, not just last know. time, but all the time. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. I have a couple of them. I, I got I got a couple too. I'm a leather guy. <laughs> I am, man. I love it. It's that and some uh, leather shoes to yeah. go with it. It's mm. the European in us, man. We can't help it. I that think so. Leather <laughs> jacket so. track <laughs> I don't have yeah. I don't have any. Uh, yeah, I got. I had one tracksuit. Rid of it. No, I don't have any Adidas in my closet. I'm not a real Euro <laughs> European yeah. man. Yeah, I can't believe that. <laughs> oh shit. All right, man. You have a beautiful day. Take care. Uh, looking forward to seeing everything uh, leading up to the fight. There are some promos, so make sure you guys go on the Friday Night Fights Facebook and you find the all the stuff leading up to it. Once again, UFC Fight Pass, you can do your seven-day free trial. Super simple. Just put in your credit card and then just keep it going after if you'd like to. If not, it is all good. So um, hopefully they keep this going. Do you know if they have plans of uh, – continuing yeah. this relationship yeah. if, if this goes well they'll definitely continue uh uh doing that with friday night fights so we got to make a big uh big show big statement so that's even more of a reason for everyone to 
get on there, be tuning in just to show that we care about Muay Thai and that'll make Muay Thai grow. And that just gives more opportunities for not only the fighters that are going on right now, but the people that are going to be going on for the next few decades, especially if we show that we want it. I mean, everything is the supply and demand. So if people want it and it makes money, it, we're going to have more opportunities. Absolutely. And don't forget to follow me on social media at Topic Fight. Boom. And we're out.